Welcome to episode 6 of Between God and Us, a series hosted by Master Eric of The Untold Truth and myself, Omkar of Sankhya TV, where we discuss everything in spirituality that lies between God and us. And here on today's episode, we are discussing earth crimes versus sins. So the difference is what happens and the effects on us as individuals and our spiritual life, our, our time here on earth, basically everything that you need to know regarding sin. Master Eric? Uh, first of all, I want to say Sitaram, Assalamu Alaikum, and Sairam. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, Omkar, I thought this is a good one to start with on this program. The reason is it affects us in our daily life. It's something that we all do unconsciously. Right. And if, again, if you don't have the knowledge behind you, how would you know not to do it? Right. This is what we have to look at. And then what is it that between earth and God, what are the differences? And what he's laid out mm -hmm. and then versus what the human law has laid out. So as we go through life, you're going down through your daily routine and you see something, or let's say somebody else saw something. And then they come to you later that day and say, hey boy, my friend told me they saw mm -hmm. and told you what they saw. At that time, if you haven't seen it yourself, or you have not heard it yourself, and you hear it from somebody that heard it from somebody else, what is that? Gossip? Correct. Now, in today's world, is gossip a crime? No. Is it even down to a misdemeanor? I would argue that most news is gossip. Okay, so we're going to get into that. Yeah. So if it's gossip, gossip is a sin. Right. Not a crime on earth. So every time we do it, you are stacking up the bad karma. Okay. So people need to stop refraining. They need to refrain themselves from passing on information that you did not witness yourself, that you did not experience, mm. right? So let's go to another one. Is breaking a speed limit a crime? In the lawful sense? Yeah. Yeah. But is it a sin? No. So see, this is what we're going at. Now, here's the big one. All over Trinidad and Tobago and all over the world. Is committing adultery a crime no. here on earth? A crime? A crime. No. Are you going to go to jail no. for committing adultery? Well, I think in Arabian countries, yeah, right? I'm the, talking uh, here in Trinidad and Tobago. No. Right. So there's no human law that jails you for committing adultery. But adultery is a major sin. Right. Now, when people say certain things... Oh, hold on. Let me find, define adultery here, right? Because I don't want people to ask to, to impose their own definition. What do you mean by adultery? Because you have sex before marriage, which is technically outside marriage, but then you have sex when you're married with someone that you are not married to. But according to spirituality, right. is having, okay, let's not say spirituality. According to religion, right. 
is having that relationship of having intercourse while you're not married, it's not a crime. It's a sin. But is it a sin? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But the okay. Christians will argue, well, who Adam and Eve, who marry Adam and Eve if they were the first man and woman? They weren't human. Okay. All right. Well, that were they born sense. from a womb? I'd have to be quite the next day. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is where we have to really start looking. Right. So now, adultery mm -hmm. is if you are married, mm -hmm. whether it's husband or wife, and you are going outside of that wedlock, and you actually unite and you're being with another person outside of the one that you're married, mm -hmm. that is adultery. Right. Now, for every act in some ancient beliefs, some, it states for every act, so every time you commit adultery, there is a 500 years penalty. That's how serious adultery is. Okay, hold on, right? I have a next question. Okay. It's not to, to, to digress from your point, I just hear, yeah, right? You know, in the, for Sri Krishna, it is said that he had 10 wives, I believe, mm -hmm. but Radha was not one of his wives. She was outside the marriage. I think you need to read it a little deeper. No, I just, yeah, I didn't really read. So, kind of right. <laughs> and again, don't take hearsay. Right. I want you to understand, from the beginning of time, man has intervened in the writings. I want you to understand that. Right. But there were certain religions where they said you could have more than one wife. But the reason was, back in those days, mm -hmm. they believed, since all the men went to fight in war, mm -hmm. that if their husband got killed and they had children in themselves, they should not have to live by themselves that a married man can bring them in to support them because their husband got killed. Okay. You understand? Yeah. There were reasons behind it. Yeah. But I'm not going to knock how religions are. Right. Some say you could have more than one wife, but it was based on that principle way back. So it was based on they social They just condition. carried it on. Yeah. Okay. But if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. Huh. All I'm saying, adultery. Now, if one has more than one wife, mm -hmm. there are criteria. Like in the Muslim faith, mm -hmm. you are married to one. If you want to have another wife, you have to also tell your first wife and get approval. Mm -hmm. You understand? Now, if you have four wives... That's not weird. So you're supposed to ask, you're not supposed to get the girlfriend first and then tell she, well, you know, you have this girl that you like and you want to marry her, or you're supposed to say, you know, I want to All I'm saying, wife. if you do it that way, is that spiritual? No. Okay, all right, cool. Remember, as a spiritual person, you're supposed to lay out how things are said, how the solving has to be spiritual. Right. You cannot have human influences or desires based into your solution, what you're actually putting out. So now, if you have more than one wife, you have to treat each one equally. One cannot favor more than the other. There are rules. So... Most men out here, they can't even keep up with one wife. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
Now picture a bunch of them. It's going to be hard to treat each one equally. So that's the adultery. So 500 years penalty. Right. Per act. Right. Now, some people out there are probably getting a little worried because they know they're doing this every day. Mm -hmm. You know, all I'm saying, if you're doing something like this, it's never too late to stop. It's never too late to change what you're doing. But then on the other hand, what goes with adultery is when you committed and made that commitment to the other one mm -hmm. that you wanted to get married and you're going to be loyal, trustworthy and everything, but you're doing that. So yes, you're committing adultery, the major sin. But on the other hand, there's another twofold to that. And the twofold is, are you doing your duty as a husband to the wife or from the wife to the husband? And one of the major sins you could ever make and commit is failing your duty as that person. So now you're getting a double whammy from one act, okay? Then, what rolls in at the same time? Karma. So the sin adds up and karma. You have to pay off the karma. But then you have karma from your past lives and then you have karma during this life. Then you have what they call immediate karma. So now from that act of adultery, you committed adultery. Mm -hmm. You also failed at your duty. You also failed at your duty again if you have children. So now you're not doing the role model as a father or a mother mm -hmm. to your children. Now, who pays for that act? Yes, the person makes the act. It affects the wife or the husband. It depends who made the act. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it also affect the parents? Doesn't it also affect the family? And doesn't it, because of the act, there could be a possible divorce, correct? Yeah. All from what? That act. Now the kids, innocently, mm -hmm. are going to pay for that act. Because now they don't have a father or a mother anymore. Now they have to live separate from the father and mother. Their whole lives are turned upside down because of what? That act. So that's immediate karma. It's a reaction that goes even down to your children and your family from the act. So when people do sins and you do things that aren't proper, they don't think of the consequences. Who else is this going to affect in their life? So now... You have that. There's a lot of things that we do every day, Omkar, that we're not aware of. Now, my question is, is a sin only by action? Or can a sin also be a thought? It could be a thought. Right. Yeah. So some people, when they're driving down the road, and I think we've all done it when we were young and dumb and stupid. You see a pretty woman walking down the street. You're almost ready to hit the car in front of you. But then you're like, whoa, ho. Now, there could be at that time, if you don't have control, 
some thoughts come in your mind. Mm -hmm. Would that be a sin? Isn't that lust? Mm -hmm. Lust is a sin. See, we have to be aware of how our mind thinks every day. We got to be aware of our actions every day. Now, what's, what's really tripping people up out here is that, you know, they always say you have to witness to God. You got to witness for God. You got to go out and tell the people. You got to give the message out, right? Which is good. But how you thoroughly witness to people about how you are or who you believe in is by your actions. So you know you're on TV, right? All right? Now, you're going down the road. You don't know these people. You don't know everybody that watches your show. But they know who you are. So let's say you were doing something that you weren't supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But you're talking spirituality. But they see you. What do you think is going through their mind? You're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. See, this is what people don't understand. You cannot be one way in front of people mm -hmm. and be something else outside of their view. Right. You, you are not being yourself either. Right. Now that's a sin also. You cannot be a hypocrite. You should be one way. All right. Let me give you an example. There's some people, spiritual leaders, when they're conducting their service or their prayers or whatever it is, and somebody does something wrong, they will stop the prayers and start yelling and cussing at these people. Mm -hmm. Is that spiritual? No. No. Wouldn't that be classed as a sin? Because the higher you go up the spiritual ladder, the more that's required from you. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand this. Now, we're going to take a little spin on earth crimes versus sins. Now, what else is classed as adultery in spirituality? We already talked about the definition. What else do you think classifies as adultery in spirituality? I think um, changing the religion. Pardon? Let's say you commit yourself to serving one guru or to serving one um, god. Now I'm talking what's adultery. Yeah. In spirituality. In spirituality. In a spiritual sense. And people have no idea. But there are many religions in the world. And I want you to think, because you've heard it. They say divorce is forbidden. Right. Why would they say that? The regular human during our everyday life, we don't even think about that. Why would different religions state divorce? You cannot get divorced. Because it's already forbidden. Yourself. You mean I promise before God to be with this one person. So you break your promise to God and the person. When you get divorced and remarry to somebody else. Okay, you're, you're real close. You're real close. You, in every belief, right. whether you're doing a nikah and, and Muslim or a wedding or you're doing a Hindu wedding, the three nights, whatever. Right. You're being witnessed. The witness of your union, that commitment, is God himself. Right. Now, when we go and say we're getting divorced, 
Where do we go to get divorced? In a court. Court. Does God recognize man's law? No. Or his law? His law. Right. Right. So now, and this is the first time that I've ever learned when I came to Trinidad, people get divorced, they have a divorce line. They're celebrating, <laughs> having a party, they're free, they're good to go. Are you? No. Because that piece of paper yeah. has not broken that spiritual bond. So now, when you leave this one, because you think you're divorced, right. and you have this one over here, are you committing adultery or not? Yeah, it's adultery in a spiritual sense, yeah. People don't understand this. So, the reason some of the religions on earth, they state it cannot, it's forbidden, mm -hmm. right? Is because they don't know how to break it. They do not know how to break that bond, that union, yeah. right? But thousands of years ago, there were rituals written just for that. Mm -hmm. And you call it this, a spiritual cut. Mm -hmm. So when you do a spiritual cut, it cuts all spiritual bonds. Okay? And I know people's getting tired of hearing this, but we're going to do a program just on what is a spiritual tie and what is a spiritual cut. Now, once you do the spiritual cut, you are released. And now you can move forward with a new venture or a new chapter in your life. But what people don't understand, spirituality is totally different from religion. And what I mean by that, you know that door outside here, yeah. right? But you're in here with this door. So now you open this door and you're wanting to get out of here, just like people did with that marriage. Mm -hmm. But you want to go through that door. In spirituality, you can't go through that door until this one that you just walked through is closed. All right. You have to finalize properly what that situation was before you move forward. And this isn't being taught. The guidelines is not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what would have been better is if that act was never committed in the first place of, of adultery. Because... Look at all the people that was affected by that one act. Mm. Now, let me ask you a question. Is it a crime to control your wife and to actually keep her at home? We mean control, like the like order how to... Let me give you a case. Right. This case came to us a couple of years ago. This man was married. Right. His wife could never, she has never left the house, even to go to the market, for 41 years. Okay. He would not let her go. He would go bring the food back. Haircut, he gave her the haircut. Makeup, he says she didn't need no makeup because she's not going nowhere, right? This is a form of torture. Yeah. Okay, because you're a slavery? prisoner now. Yeah. You're not a wife, right? Yeah. But technically, is that a crime? No. Technically. Now you could try to say she was an emotionally tortured. 
because she was never beaten. You understand what I'm saying? That's a gray line to go on. But in reality, is How that big a, is the house? Is that sin? It's a sin. You would you would really be amazed at some of the stuff that's happening right here. I had another woman, and it's a sin. And this was one that was a sin and crime. Right. The woman snuck out. She took six different taxis to come and see us. When she comes, she sat down, real nervous. And she said, oh God, I hope they didn't follow me. I said, you're okay here. Talk to me. But she kept pulling down her shirt like this. Yeah. I called my wife in. I said, ma'am, pull up your shirt, the sleeve. Mm -hmm. And then I turned my head and told her, pull it up for my wife to view. She had cigarette and cigar, cigar burns all over her body. Only where it was covered with the clothes. If she didn't do what was right, he would tie her down and burn her. Mm -hmm. Stuff like this is happening, Omkar. And there has to be a way that they can get out, at least to contact us, to where we can give them the right people to talk to and get their help. Yeah. We can help them counseling and stuff like that, but we have to legally start getting them help. Yeah. And we have the avenues to help people out there. And I know there's some viewers out here that's watching right now. They're in that predicament, yeah. but they can't call. They can't go out of the house. They're being controlled. So some of these things is a gray line of not committing a crime, but it's a sin. So if a person hits their wife hard, starts beating them, mm. is that a crime? Yeah. Not all the time. They call it domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, it's like a misdemeanor. Okay. But in reality, it's a sin. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Every woman that is born on earth has the divine mother in her. Mm -hmm. And every time they're beaten, guess who they're going to have to face when they leave here? The divine mother. Mm -hmm. women is the essence of creation and I'm not saying that the mama guy the female viewers but women are the essence of creation creation happens within the mothers not the fathers mm -hmm. so we need to start looking at what are we doing now that is not considered a crime on earth but a sin. Then some people say, okay, we have the Ten Commandments for the Christians. Yeah. Well, isn't one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not commit adultery? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. But how many Christians are committing adultery? See, this is what I'm talking about. It's not really being discussed. It's not really being discussed of the penalties per, yeah. right? Is lying a crime? Uh, technically, it depends on where I lie, like in court. But no, it's not a crime. It's not a crime. Yeah. Is it a sin? Yeah. Correct. Then they have to look at, and they can research it, what is the penalty for committing a lie that you have to pay for? Now, some people say, hmm, I just told a white lie, a little white lie mm -hmm. for the good. Well, I've always been taught that it doesn't matter what color you put on the lie, 
Mm -hmm. A lie is a lie. Yeah. It should always, you should always tell the truth. But the problem is society doesn't like the truth. So let's cause a little waves tonight. What about people who tell their version of the truth? Well, this is why I said, <laughs> let's cause a little turbulence tonight during this program. And I'll be watching when it comes up. Not that I'm the judge. I watch and learn. Yeah. I love to learn by watching people. So during elections, mm -hmm. when the politicians get up on stage mm -hmm. and they say this and this and this and this about the other one, and it could happen both ways at the same time. Mm -hmm. Did they see it for themselves? No. no. Did they hear it for themselves? No. no. What's that class as? That's a sin. Right. Right? So why do we do this? That is classed under false witness. Okay. Major sin. But why do people do this? They do this to try to make the other person look bad and to make themselves look better. But in reality, they're both doing wrong. Right. Why don't you just state the fact why you might be better than the other one? Mm. What can you do? What is your plan? What is your projection? How will the people benefit? Not just campaigning by putting somebody else down. This happens all over the world. Yeah. Right? And when I see it, I'm like, oh my God, these people don't know what they're doing to themselves. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, we talked about it a little bit before in the last couple programs. But if a person uses obia, which I've seen, mm -hmm. and they're spiritual, well known, but they took four 15 year old girls from their families by infatuation. So they infatuated the parents and they said, let this little 15 year old live with me. She'll be taken care of. They say, yes. And he's married, but he's having babies with them. Mm -hmm. Is that a sin? Of course. Mm -hmm. Many different ways. There's multiple layers of sin. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say, why are we doing this? Why can't we just be who we're supposed to be? The problem is nobody knows who they truly are. So let me give you an example. When people are at home, Omkar, and they wake up in the morning, they have their routine, whatever they want to do. And they talk a certain way at home. They eat a certain way. They may even slouch down in the couch. They're a certain way. But when they get their work clothes on and they go to work, are they the same? No. Or do they change? Change. To fit the work environment, correct? Yeah. Now they went back home got back to their normal self. Oh, I got a function to go to. Now, when they leave home and they go to the function, they're not wearing the work hat. They put another hat on. Mm -hmm. And then when you go and date somebody, aren't you putting on another hat? Aren't you trying to be on your best behavior? Yeah try to look good in front of them, but are you being yourself? No. Is that right or wrong? Or should you be at a position in your life to where you could be the same everywhere you go? 
Why do we think we have to change to fit in? Right. Or try to fit in? Is there a reason? The reason is people feel they have to do things to belong to certain sectors of the world. Mm -hmm. So when you see a guy, I'm going to give you a prime example. I used to live in the West here in Trinidad. Okay. All right. By a church. I'm not going to say where. Yeah. And on Sundays, I'd be on my balcony and I'm drinking my coffee, but I could hear the sermon and I could hear the singing, the hymns. Right. Really nice. I loved it. But as soon as church let out, the parking lot was small. Traffic jam. And you're hearing them yell out of the car. Watch him move your app. <laughs> and start cussing. Yeah. So I was confused. Right. You go inside, you act like you're righteous, but then when you come outside, you left that inside the church. Yeah. Is that right? No. Right. We can fool humans, Omkar, but we can't fool God. We may think that nobody sees us because we got our head in the sand. Hmm. And just because we can't see him, they don't think they can see us. But God sees all. So why don't we start living life, being proud of who you are yourself, respect yourself, love yourself, and not go these routes that society is saying it's okay. You know, this is why we're seeing all these rapid changes in the world today. And we're starting to see where parents don't have no say anymore on what the child's learning. Hmm. The child can make a decision whether he can be a boy or a girl at preschool age. Mm -hmm. Parents can't do nothing about it. I think we all need to go back to our values and, and start, and ethics, and start living life the way it should be. I remember when I first came to Trinidad and Tobago, I was amazed. I was totally amazed. Why? I had a house up by Trin City. And my neighbor's kid was doing something. And I'm American, so I didn't say anything, because that's the way we're taught. Yeah. But the neighbor next door, boy, pulled up their socks, gave them a whipping, and said they're, you know, she's letting them pair, and they corrected the child. Yeah. Right? And I said, wow, we lost that years ago. Now you've lost it. Yeah, in Trinidad, yeah. They're actually doing what we've done up there a long time ago. And we're losing the values and the ethics. What actually the old people's taught and how we're acting per day. So my question is, earth crime versus sins. Do you think people will start after they listen to this program, they might be a little more aware of what they're doing? Or do you think they're gonna still do what they have to do to fit in with who they wanna be with? I think most people they will still continue doing what they have been doing all, all along. The reason is because it's a, it's a conditioning. Like some people, you're very rare. They'll hear something and you know something will snap in, inside and or they'll have a light bulb moment. But most people, they will just, they'll be satisfied from having the thought of becoming better. They say, oh, you know, Master Eric is talking a lot of sense, and I should really begin thinking about you know, like sin rather than crime, like earth, crime, 
compared to what is a sin and like and they'll feel better because they think they actually will will do it but then tomorrow they'll go back and because it's all around us it's saturated and this then, is where the testing comes in yeah I want you to understand, Omkar, in spirituality, the earth itself mm. is classed like an earth and um, test and learning grounds. Mm. We're going to be enticed. We're going to be tested to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And we're actually being almost like being graded mm -hmm. on how we're going to respond. Yeah. And if we start making an effort today to try to be better, try to be more righteous, mm -hmm. it's never too late to stop. I mean, to start. Right. But on the other hand, and everybody viewing, you can WhatsApp myself at one eight six eight. Three five four 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 five nine, or you could WhatsApp Omkar, and he'll give you the number here in a little bit. That's why we developed a self analysis sheet. Right. And if people would like to get the sheet, we could email it to you, or we can WhatsApp it to you, and you could print it. Now on that sheet, Omkar, mm -hmm. it has. 50 different things mm -hmm. we shouldn't do per day. Should not. Should not. Now, and then it's broken down to two weeks. Now, what you do when you get the sheet, at the end of the day, by yourself in a quiet place, and be honest to yourself. Nobody needs to know what you're writing down. Mm -hmm. But in every box, you check, you check off what you've done, mm. right? The goal is that every day, every checklist should get one shorter. Mm -hmm. Try just to eliminate one per day. So if anybody wants that, wants that, you contact us and we'll forward it to you. Now... You mentioned in our last program, and I'm going to bring it back in, that a lot of people think that this body and the soul is to get its one. Mm -hmm. But it can't be. The reason I'm saying that, when we die, the soul don't die. Right. It goes on its journey. Where does this body stay? It body stays here. Right. Yeah. So, when we're out on our own by ourselves, who is with us that's dictating what we're doing? Our soul. So people need to understand, in the scriptures, mm -hmm. It says that we are being viewed as a spectacle. Spectacle in those days means theater. Mm -hmm. So how many people does that mean or beings are watching us every moment of the day? Think about it. People need to wake up. And I'm not saying everybody's a sinner. Anybody that says they have not sinned, they're lying. Yeah. But we have to stop. Whatever we're doing, we catch it. Yeah. Now, where do you catch it? When the thought comes in your mind. You don't wait to catch it after the thought has already processed to become an action. Mm -hmm. We need to catch it in the thought process. Now, stop it. I have an idea, right? So I'll just pitch in the idea as we're on the topic of stopping it. You know, like I used to smoke, 
mm-hmm. when I was in high school. And I stopped smoking when I was 20. So I smoked for about five years, right? My time, like when I was close to stopping smoking, I was smoking like two packs of cigarettes a day, right? So, but I, I started kickboxing. I started doing martial arts, right? So in my mind, giving up smoking was, an, was the natural choice because I can't be smoking and then working out and catching up, like having the um, gas for breath or like my condition will suffer. So is sin now something the same way where it's hard to give up sinning, like, like adultery or, or lust, because that you don't have a, a prize. So, so if we identify the prize, because you could say, okay, don't sin because it's a sin. But then there's no prize, so why give it up, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I like the way you put that. It's kind of funny. So you're saying we should bribe people <laughs> with prizes no, no, no. to stop committing adultery? No, no. no I, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Like, so, it's a greater good. Like you, you in, your, in my mind, giving up smoking was for the greater good of the training for kickboxing. But that was for you. Yeah. Now, that may not be right for someone else. Okay. Now, the reason I'm saying that, people have free will of choice. All right. We could dictate every day what people need to do and what they shouldn't do. Yeah. But in reality, it's their decision. Yeah. A spiritual leader cannot tell people what to do. Yeah. If you noticed, everything I said tonight, is it man's law or God's law? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it's good or bad. Mm-hmm. I'm just laying out the knowledge. No, the point, the point that you're now, to get. somebody that's overweight. Right. And you recommend to them not to keep eating a bunch of haagen ice cream. Right. But they still do. Mm-hmm. I cannot condemn them for still eating haagen ice cream. Right. Because that's their free will of choice. Right. Without knowledge and without methods, mm-hmm. control is hard to do. Right. Once you have the spiritual knowledge of how to control your mind and your desires, you're still going to spin top of mud if you don't know how to control. Mm -hmm. Controlling your desires, think about it. If you desire to drink, but you control it. Mm -hmm. You desire to smoke, you control it. You desire to have an outside person but you control it. Why? You wait out the consequence. Mm-hmm. You know what the problem's gonna be. Yeah. But the problem is, when you do not have crime sentences on earth for sins, and people do not see consequences here on earth for what they do, yeah. they think it's okay. Yeah. But in reality, it's not. You know, so... All right, so what is the consequence then for adultery in, the, in terms of, you, we mentioned that um, like hell has different layers because each layer is for a particular sin. So then there's a specified place for a specified sin that you end up going. Right, remember when I said realm three was one of the nine higher hells. Right. Not the lower ones. Lower mean more severe. Correct. Right, okay. Adultery puts you clear down in realm one. Okay. I'm telling you. Because why you're defying the bond that you promised in front of God. Yeah, you broke a promise made Correct. God as a witness. So you're down within realm one dash zero to three. Yeah. So, and I think, if you want, 
I've already done a movie on it. People so basically, go, God is saying, if you lie to me, like I take offense to that, you're down there, basically. That's Remember, Omkar, as a spiritual person or mm -hmm. a spiritual leader, our job, we cannot judge no one. Yeah. Our only job is to try to find a way out mm -hmm. or a solution. But when you give a solution, there has to be two positive options. Yeah. You can't give one option. That one option could influence them to make their choice that you think they may want, that they should do. You're supposed to give them two neutral options that will fix their situation now it's up to them to pick which option they want to do. See, spiritual leaders, we cannot tell people what to do yeah. or what not to do. You can only give them guidelines to live by. Yeah. Let them make up their choice. Well, I want to learn something, right? So the same way, if you make a promise to God and then break it, well, adultery basically, right? So you end up in the lowest level of hell. Let's say... You live a righteous life, you do your, your duty. Is there a place for people who did that? Yeah, because like you wouldn't go to hell. You would go to realm four, five, six, or seven. Right. Because and the, heaven, higher, the higher you were spiritually, right. walking a righteous path. Right. I am not talking religious path. A spiritual path, you could go clear up the realm six. Right. Stage nine. Right. Right? So there are what you call the benefits. Yeah. What is the reward for being righteous or good on earth? Yeah. Well, your reward is from when you leave here. Right. You'll be rewarded. Yeah. But the problem is today, people want to see that thing now. Because I was thinking. They want to see that reward. I was thinking, well, if I'm going to get sin for... Committing adultery. I just don't get married and have sex with how much woman I want, right? But then you're still committing a sin. Oh. Lost? You're not married. Well, that's right. So that's the point. So then no. So, no, no, no. <laughs> that, I was thinking, so then that line of thought, you, f you, you did not capitalize on the opportunity to have a marriage, make the promise, and cash in on being faithful. If you know, but like you're still you committing that. a sin. So this, what I'm saying yeah. by what is written, right? I have to clarify that. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a sin. Yeah. What I'm saying, what is written. Right. See, I think the world today, you got people going into the temples, you got them going into the mosque. You got them going into the synagogues. You got them going in everywhere you could think of on in the world, mm -hmm. right? But they don't live by what they're learning. They don't live by, they live by hypocrites. They're one way inside there and then come out and do another. So is it that society is changing religion? Is it that society if you notice, there's things going on right now which totally defies any religious belief on this world, in this world. Okay. And nobody's speaking up because they're afraid, they're afraid of the repercussions that could come back. Well, if that's the case and nobody wants to speak up in the world, so are we gonna let the world rewrite the scriptures now to make sure it's okay to do what they're doing now? Or do we stand up for what we believe in as a group? Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example. All these things that are changing all over the world, right? right that defies every scripture right. written. Do you think a government of any type could still do it 
if the Muslims, the Christians, the Hindus, every belief that you could think of unite and say, this ain't going to happen no more. The governments will have to change. Yeah. So why aren't we standing up, coming together as a unit to benefit the people of the world? You're not going to see it happen, Omkar, because man has divided religion. Mm. Until somebody could stand up and start uniting, which I'm trying to do, mm -hmm. Try to love thy neighbor. Get along with them. They may think different than us, but my God, they're my neighbor. You should love them. Help them. Mm -hmm. They might be different. No, it's not being taught. Mm -hmm. If we don't start changing and standing up for what's right, even as an individual, do you know where this world's going to be in 20 years? Look how it's changed in the last 10 years. Yeah. Tell me as a young individual, how much has it changed in the last 10 years? Yeah. Where's it gonna be in 20? This is what I'm trying to say. Now, you as a young individual, young individuals out here, you wanna have children. You wanna raise children. But do you want children to come into something like this right now? No. Exactly. So why are we actually bulk, buckling down to society? So in a nutshell. Is, is it part of, look like the Sumerians, right? And the Egyptians and the ancient Vedic um, India. Mm. The, the, the part, the, the Sanskrit era of India, not current India. And even with the Muslims, with um, the Prophet Muhammad. That, and all other religions will have the same thing. They ended in, well, not the Muslims, obviously, but like the Sumerians, like that era of enlightenment that they had ended. The era of enlightenment with the Egyptians ended with all the other religions, but well, basically we're not with three major religions now. But even the current Hindu religion is not, what, if you read the scripture, the Hindu scriptures, what those guys were, you don't have that now. The ancient swamis and saints and stuff like that. Is like it the that, rishis, the moonies yeah. and all of that. So is it that at this time, this is, let's say the tapering off of the current civilization in terms of spiritual, development and then it, it slumps down and then probably something comes up probably in a couple thousand years the, the human race will still be there but in terms of religion and spirituality according to what's written yeah nothing is going to go back up this is kali yoga yeah everything's going to keep going down it also says that all spiritual leaders will start to go away from god and they're going to focus on money yeah. All they're going to be wo focused on is going to be money. Crime is going to be escalating. People will stop praying as a family unit. All of this is written. Yeah. And I, th I want to go over that with you someday because let me tell you something. You're seeing it right now. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what's going on. So these people that wrote this back millenniums ago, they knew. Yeah. But well, that's what I mean, like, it, you we know, in it, we in that period. And then, there's one I want to go over, but it'll be about 10 programs from now. A lot of religions condemn others. Mm -hmm. And Christians are very good at that. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. Right. I, I, I've learned all of them, as much as I could so far. And that's against what was actually dictated. Number two, how could you say as a Christian that Hindus are going to hell because they're praying to the deities? But then, and I'll reference it, in the Vedas, the ancients predicted Jesus Christ 
and said there would be a man, son of God, being born. Mm -hmm. And he would end up being crucified on a cross with a crown of thorns. Okay. So if the... If they're supposed to be the devil, how would they have the knowledge from God to predict what was going to happen? Mm -hmm. See, man's intervened and it has to stop. There's only one person that really stood on this earth and actually tried to speak the truth of unity, love, and that was Sai Baba. Mm -hmm. That's all he preached. He said, love the Christians. The Christians are great. The Hindus are great. This is great. Love. Preach love. Mm -hmm. But nobody else listened. It's all hatred. And until we do, we're not committing earth crime, but we're committing sins every day. You know, Omkar, you know, it's been a pleasure being with you. Um, I know I can keep talking all night. But I just hope people took a little something from this program tonight. And if they could try to do something a little better or stop something that they're doing, now's the best time. And if you do want the self-analysis sheet, please WhatsApp us. The numbers are at the bottom of the screen. But Omkar, it's been a pleasure being with you. Same here. <laughs> Number one, you have a great night.